All right, we have Montana De La Rosa joining the program. She returns to action this Saturday night at UFC Vegas 16 and will face Talia Santos at the Apex in Las Vegas. Montana, how are you? I'm doing great. Can't wait for this weekend. It should be a, a very entertaining card. Thank you for doing this so close to the fight, by the way. I appreciate it. First off, how was Thanksgiving? I, I'm sure you weren't able to uh, to partake in the festivities as much as you maybe you would in previous years, but it's always nice to reflect and spend time with family. How did you enjoy the holiday? Uh, yeah, I just had my sister come down and kind of went to my, went to my parents' house, ate a little bit of turkey, nothing else. But yeah, it was fun hanging out with them and just being around my daughter and family. And it's always good to get together with my family. Absolutely. Especially this year where it's so hard to, to travel and, and get together with anybody right now. Right. Yeah. A lot of people are going through it. I'm, I'm glad I'm able to have my family here. Absolutely. So we confirmed you were taking this fight around 11 or so days ago as we record right now. When did you know that this fight was a thing and that then Penn went to paper? Um, they told me about three weeks ago. So I had a good three week camp. Um, yeah, they, they announced it really late. It was kind of weird, but I was like itching to announce it, but I had to wait till they like officially announced it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes they do that. Normally we get the, the stuff out right away, but, but here we are. So it wasn't, so it wasn't like a super short training camp, not as not what you would probably like or would would rather yeah. go with, but still it's more than like than we than maybe we thought it was. Yeah, and I was training already really hard. I was actually hoping to get a fight like early December, so I was I was glad when they gave it to me. I immediately said yes. So we last saw you compete a couple of months ago. You took on Viviani Araujo and you know, the fight didn't go your way, but you showed a lot of toughness in that fight. So I guess silver lining wise, what were you able to take from that fight just being on, despite being on the wrong side of the decision? Um, it's just always good getting in there with high level girls like that. She was super tough hit really probably was one of the hardest hitters that I've ever gone against. She hit, she hit super hard. Um, and I was able to strike with her the whole time. I really wanted to show my striking in that fight. So I feel like I was able to do that and just get better and learn from it. Yeah, I was going to say, because, I mean, you definitely showed a lot of improvement in that aspect. You seem to have a lot more confidence in your stand-up. And you had your moments in the fight. You were landing some hard shots of your own. Is it just a comfort thing for you? Because it did seem like, you know, you were you were evolving in the striking game. You wanted to show it. But you seemed a lot more comfortable in there on your feet than maybe you were in your previous fights. Yeah, just getting more and more confidence in the cage. I was doing, like, a lot of uh, working on my mind and trying to – just trying to be super confident in there like I am during training. Like it's always hard to get that out of me when I'm actually in, in the cage because it's, it's just so, so different being in, in that cage in front of all those people. So I think just working on my mind and stuff really helped me bring out the confidence and helped me showcase my skills better. What sort of things did you do specifically to, to help work on your mind and improve that aspect? Um, just Lately, working a lot with my coach, uh, Elliot Marshall, and just journaling and reading books and, yeah, all that. <laughs> reading books? What kind of, what kind of books? Um, just, like, uh, audio books, you know, mindset books. So you feel like you're in a much better place now that you've been able to, to write your thoughts down and then listen to some different things as well? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel a lot more confident getting into the cage now. So you started off the year with, with the win over Mara Barella and then COVID struck and it's just been kind of a whirlwind since then. Like even like this fight, you found out three weeks ago that you're getting a fight at the end of the year. Three fights in a year struck by a pandemic. Did you think back in March that we'd even be having that conversation? Yeah, I mean, well, I guess everyone kind of thought that the pandemic would be a lot quicker. Like I thought we'd be over it by the time um, like August came around, but it just kept lingering on and lingering on. But I'm really glad the UFC is still putting on the fights. Cause I mean, that's how we make our money. So, I mean, it, I'm just grateful for that. Cause I know a lot of people couldn't make money during the shutdown and I was able to get three fights this year. So it's, it, it, it's been a really good year for me. So you're going to face Talia Santos on Saturday, her third UFC fight. She had the loss to Mara in her first fight, but she bounced back with a really nice win over Molly McCann on Fight Island. And that was one that certainly surprised some folks, not not just because she won the fight, but many people thought if this fight went to the ground, this is Molly McCann's world. And it turned out that wasn't the case at all. How do you like this matchup from a stylistic perspective, especially after what we saw in the, her, her win over Molly McCann? Yeah, I mean, she she was able to show how good she is everywhere. Really. I'm just excited to get in there and showcase my skills and 
yeah, I just think it's a really good matchup. I mean, yeah, she's she's no slouch anywhere, so it'll be a good night. You mentioned Elliot Marshall. I know you spent a lot of your last camp with Elevation Fight Team. Six or so weeks or so you spent out there. A little more difficult to put together this time around, I would assume, with the short notice. But how have you sort of navigated the waters for this particular camp? So I was going to go up to Colorado, but Elevation Fight Team had a whole bunch of COVID cases. Like, they were just popping up everywhere. So he's like, you know what, stay home, stay with your coaches. And I was just Zoom calling him like every day. And we were just like going over a game plan. And just he was just has been a really big help for the whole camp, even not being uh, in the same state as him. So I've been working with Eric Sands, my wrestling coach, and that's been going really good. And I always have my husband here, Mark Delarosa. And then, yeah, just having him to be able to zoom call me and go over game plan and stuff. That's been great. When did you start working with, with elevation? Um, so I was, I think I started going out there in the summer. So around like June and I would, I would, went for a few weeks and then I went another couple weeks and then I decided to have my <clears throat> fight camp there when my fight was announced. So I got a good seven weeks there before my last fight. Was that always kind of the plan or like the first trip, did you go out there and just be like, Oh, let me just see what this like. It's a little bit different. And then it just kind of grew on you. Yeah. I just kind of wanted to feel it out. See if I clicked with the coaches and see how the training partners were and stuff. Shauna Dobson had a lot of great things to say about you. Um, (laughs) before her last fight, she said that she worked with you extensively and getting to work with you and taking punches and being worked on the ground really helped her and her her win over Maria Agapova. And we saw what that did for her and kind of launched her in a different way. People got to see how good she really was. How fun was that to work with her and then to watch her have a win like that? Oh, it was awesome. I don't think I've ever been like more excited for somebody. Like I was so happy when she got that win. Um, yeah, I've been working with her. I've known her for a while now, ever since I started fighting and she, cause she was down here in Texas and then we were actually on the ultimate fighter together. And then she's kind of how I got clicked up with elevation. Cause I messaged her and I'm like, where are you training at these days? And she, she told me about them and I decided to go over there and try it with her. I saw on your Instagram, a photo of you and Lauren Murphy. And I know Lauren is, can be pretty active on social media. She's all over your posts, shouting you out and giving you some good vibes. Yeah. How important, how great has that been to, to work with her, especially with the tear that she's been on? Oh yeah. She's like about to get a title shot. So just having her come and spar me has been amazing. Like if I can hang with her and we're getting good rounds in the cage, then I mean, I'm going to be confident to go with anyone in my division. Yeah. She's, she's an interesting case because she is like the definition of, of adversity because she was at 135. She, she overcame some, some really tough controversial decisions, which a lot of people thought went her way. She had her ups and downs, but now she's finally like found her groove. She's in Texas now, back with her old team, and things are really clicking like right now. So being able to pick her brain, not just about fighting, but just about like life itself, how beneficial has that been for you? Oh yeah, she has like a great mindset all the time. Like she is super tough. Uh, she's just great to be around. She's always positive, and yeah, I just couldn't be more grateful to have her like come help me. And what a good time to be in this division because there is a, a lot of interest in it right now with Valentina and then there's multiple people like Lauren, like Jessica Andrade. They're both right there in the title picture and then you get Cynthia Calvillo there and Caitlin Chukagan and it just seems like 125 is as interesting as it has ever been. Have you noticed that as well? And if so, how excited does that make you for, for your fighting future in this division? Oh yeah, I mean, I just want to keep getting there, getting in there and getting the wins. Um, I mean, I'm not looking to too far forward into like title or anything, but I just want to keep getting in there and getting my wins and just see where it takes me. Well, you have a chance to get another win on Saturday, the number 15th ranked fighter in the world, taking on Talia Santos, who would love nothing more than to put that number next to her name. So uh, how do you get this thing done on Saturday? How does this all play out Saturday night in Las Vegas? I'm going to go in there and be super aggressive and just do my best to get my hand raised at the end. We're going to see more of that stand-up game? Uh, yeah, I mean, you'll see. Very well-rounded. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, I appreciate the time very much. When are you heading out? Tomorrow? Uh, yep, tomorrow morning. There you go. Well, I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you for the time. Anything else you want to get off your chest before we say goodbye? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Montana. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. Thank you.